Uh, so, good day, everyone. Uh, thanks for being here. Of course, uh, well, still uh, on the application side of uh, Earth observation, well, I'm not doing any mapping here, but mostly uh, using analysis ready products uh, to compile carbon accounts using this uh, newly uh, international standard uh, framework, uh, which is called SEEA, and somehow comparing it to uh, an existing one, which is the, the way uh, countries support the UNFCCC. It's part of their, uh, uh, it's part of NDCs or the, the Paris Agreement uh, framework. Yeah. So I'm Arlen Rasa. So it's an effort of uh, uh, a small team, Lars Hein, Yu Feng, jo Joanna Mello, and Martin Herald. So I'm from uh, Biodiversity Exosystem Service Group of uh, Wakaneg University. So just, uh, yeah, outline. Uh, maybe some of you, uh, you just heard of uh, uh, environmental accounting or NCA. So I'll give a bit of context, uh, emphasizing uh, SIA framework, of course. And then how EO is really uh, uh, complementary to uh, compiling these accounts, uh, uh, mainly because of the data input uh, side of things. Um, of course, uh, talk about the, the study itself, an ongoing uh, exploratory study. Um, what motivates us and of course the objectives is basically a demonstration how uh, to compile these uh, accounts using uh, EO-based uh, method. So of course, uh, I'll talk about, uh, highlight the, the EO data sets themselves, uh, uh, why are, where they use and uh, um, uh, yeah. And then, the, comp the comparison between the CIA uh, carbon accounts and those with, uh, of course, the country reports. And, and I'd like to share some next steps also in Outlook so you and it can also help us uh, uh, make this research, uh, improve this research also. Yes, so of course, ecosystems, uh, particularly uh, forest ecosystems, uh, we're super aware that gives uh, uh, ecosystem services, uh, both tangible side like timber food and but I'd like to emphasize also more on the re regulation side uh, regulate uh, 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 regulation uh, based ecosystem services uh, for instance uh, let's talk about uh, soil and landslide uh, mitigation flood mitigation and what I'd like to emphasize today is like the how of course forest uh, uh, serve as uh, like a storage of course as, as stocks and also how forest sequesters carbon from the atmosphere. So it's, it's, it's in, um, contextualized in, in, as a climate regulation uh, kind of service. And this kind of uh, ecosystem service, uh, it's, it's, it's for a long time, it hasn't been in the picture uh, when you talk about the economic uh, 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 characteristic of a country. Uh, so it, it's some, uh, somehow neglected in that context. Uh, so it's always the economic indicators is being uh, included uh, when you talk about economy of a country, the wealth of a country. So there has to be like a system uh, and that's been the motivation how, why this ecosystem accounting. Oh. This, yeah. Yeah. The, why this ecosystem accounting uh, framework has been uh, developed in the first place. Uh, so uh, making nature count. Uh, so that's the slogan of this um, uh, framework. And it's basically uh, um, accounting for both the, the economic and environmental side of things aligned with the mandated uh, systems of uh, national accounts of uh, countries. And uh, the basis, the framework for doing so is, is, is the CIA framework. So C uh, systems for environmental economic accounting by the United Nations. Uh, and just uh, recently, so it's been like, uh, it became an international standard. So it's like globally accepted methodology how to uh, do this kind of uh, uh, ecosystem accounting based on such framework. Uh, oh. Sorry, I, yeah, I, I, I just realized that this is an, an, an outdated uh, <laughs> version of my presentation. But uh, yeah, anyways, um, um, well, C has been around for a decade already. Like, there's been some some experiment. There's what there was this experimental C, yeah, like uh, since 2012, and and uh, after that, countries uh, have been uh, piloting like, system accounting uh, on a small scale, and also uh, some did it at national scale. 
and then it's basically to sum it up like uh, the main output of the of of, of uh, uh, system accounting are basically two major accounts uh, the physical and the monetary accounts uh, so you see the physical side and the the green sorry, the green um, yeah this part of course uh, we, where you need uh, well you will need to know the extent of ecosystems uh, and also the condition because the service they provide uh, depends on the condition and then in this case uh, you need to uh, also quantify the, the service itself uh, well, in, this, in this example the sequestration part uh, so you need basically uh, maps of those and and after compiling those uh, having a, like a accounting table to physical you simply need to uh, have a monetary valuation of that uh, at, uh, account to be able to uh, produce the mon monetary accounts basically so so it's basically a tandem of uh, like an ecologist modeler statistician and also an economist so yeah um, so EO is really helpful uh, for uh, these uh, system accounting efforts. Um, well, mainly because, of course, uh, uh, logically, uh, ecosystems are large units. Um, and, of course, it, it, you wouldn't really survey it uh, uh, manually. Yeah? So you need really uh, inputs, options, how to uh, really quantify them. And, of course, when you have, like, maps, you have also flexibility on how to, uh, what scale of uh, system accounting you're going to do. Typically, it's na nationwide scale, but there's also some uh, local scales, regional scales that where, where you do it, like the catchment scale or at municipality level and so on. So give it some, some special uh, scale flexibility in that context. And then, of course, since C uh, system accounts mainly uh, is inherently uh, spatial accounts, uh, so it's, it's mainly map dependent. Uh, um, and then, of course, these uh, EO products are not only useful for determining the extent, the condition, but also it serves uh, so as an input to a more uh, quantify more complex uh, system service like uh, water regulation, uh, what happens when you the forest is cut in the upstream, what happens to the downstream in a Typhoon uh, event, so some something like that. And then, yes, as I, say, as I said, it's not really uh, new, but now it's really the time to uh, for countries also to do it because of the. Um, it's highly recommended at uh, the time when it was made uh, like an international standard. That's uh, two three years ago. Um, yeah, and and then also there's really a strong policy implication when you do this kind of system accounting. Uh, it's been like before. It's like like uh, just an exercise, academic exercise. So, but now it's the the focus. Now it's really demand driven. So it should really uh, serve a purpose, which is some some policy formulation, uh, implementation options also. And then of course, in the context of uh, Open Rate Monitor project, it's one of the the, the applications as you, can see, as you can see in the. Uh, highlighted, uh, uh, yeah. Um, okay, so going to the study itself, so we were of course motivated by the fact that uh, there's been like increasing the, uh, EO analysis ready data, uh, biomass data, uh, of course, uh, soil organic carbon data sets and so on. But uh, uh, the actual the demonstration of uh, how to actually use them in this uh, system accounting is uh, very rarely been done. Uh, and then the accounting per, uh, per se, the, the forest carbon accounting, I'm talking about uh, forest ecosystems here, is mainly um, uh, the above, considering the above ground component only. So of course, there's below ground uh, where the roots, uh, and of course the soil organic component. So. That should also be accounted to have like a more comprehensive uh, carbon accounts, and then you need to of course do some some comparisons uh, with similar carbon accounting. How can they be complemented? What could be the similarities and differences also? And we had a previous study also that uh, uh, demonstrates how carbon changes over time, uh, carbon fluxes can be uh, spatially predicted using an ensemble uh, machine learning model. And then this has been uh, one of the major ones that uh, we try to uh, shift from those aggregated 
a way of uh, carbon accounting, like using a certain land cover map and a lookup table to estimate a, to map uh, well, carbon density, for instance, and it could be wrong in, in some ways. Uh, so we need like to account for, of course, variability also. And uh, so like this map uh, assigns a value of uh, one carbon density in, in uh, certain forest uh, class, which is this case, uh, well, forest land, so it has only one uh, carbon density value. So that could, that's yes, um, likely incorrect. Um, yes, so we want to uh, further dive into uh, like, we actually did a, uh, like a review of what's what could be available and what could be useful also. So we had this kind of uh, uh, criteria also, uh, variables that uh, we were able to, uh, to uh, consider. And uh, at the end, we were able to uh, list around uh, like at, at most 20 above ground biomass uh, and carbon uh, data sources. And uh, also there's available uh, below ground uh, biomass carbon uh, maps also around uh, more uh, more most of them are recent uh, recently published and then uh, basis for de uh, deriving dead wood and litter and of course uh, soil organic carbons also yeah um, so we did uh, validate them uh, we, well we did the selection first because see uh, a framework is more like uh, preferred uh, the preferred inputs with, uh, of CI is um, more into the high spatial and temporal resolution because usually it's like you do the accounting period uh, annually and uh, CS also favors these, uh, these high resolution inputs so it can see, can account for uh, even the smallest uh, land use changes uh, like for instance a forest converted into a, a slash and burn agriculture or a, a mining exploration. So, so we did uh, like um, also validate independent validation of those uh, we uh, uh, use have used, and um, yes. So and uh, well, that also made us realize that of course in situ uh, data uh, for independent validation is very use uh, important, and um, so our like uh, our uh, intention to use these EO data sets will be more meaningful. Uh, and that also, I uh, would also like to highlight another effort of the uh, of uh, Open Earth Monitor, which is to uh, have this kind of uh, in situ uh, data sets available publicly. And uh, in terms of the above ground biomass component, we're trying to uh, have a multi resolution, multi epoch uh, uh, data set that can be uh, uploaded on uh, Synodo. Uh, it's almost there. Uh, we're, we're just trying to uh, finalize some things and uh, it uh, has a nice metadata also uh, with quality flags, so users uh, have the information uh, how to filter the data set in terms of quality. Uh, yeah. So uh, we ended up uh, demonstrating the, this uh, carbon accounting for six countries, uh, mostly representing uh, all the continents except uh, Australia. So we also uh, was able to use uh, independent data sets, um, uh, mainly using the CCI biomass and also uh, well, ISRIC data set and uh, uh, the root biomass uh, by Huang et al. And also, of course, Hansen data set and uh, forest management data set also of, uh, of IASA, the Lessive et al. and also the land cover. Um, yeah, there's some, some consistency also in the inputs here, so both CCI products have uh, been used and we were able to derive annual, uh, annual uh, SOC changes by incorporating the forest loss pixels and applying some SOC uh, change rates depending on the conversion. Uh, land, say, for, for instance, forest to grassland, forest to uh, agriculture. So we were able to derive root shoot ratios and apply it to the, to the above ground component. So, so we get a below ground component. We were able to map also the minor ones, dead wood and, and litter as a function of uh, precipitation and ecoregion as per IPCC. And then of course, uh, use uh, the land cover CCI, mainly because of the typology, the, the land cover classific classes uh, it, it, it has. So, um, so there's like 28 classes available and we have 
flexibility to reclassify them according to CIA uh, typology, and then also distinguish between for management uh, and unmanaged land. So, um, I really wish this had been a, a dated <laughs> a slide, but uh, anyway. Uh, um, yeah, so we did the reclassification, so we uh, were able to uh, derive these uh, classes uh, as basis for accounting, and then we were able to uh, disaggregate also between deforestation and degradation. Um, so yeah, uh, since we have two periods of land cover and an emission for a certain accounting period, like 2020, 2020 2010 to 2020, for instance, so those emissions uh, in within that happened within the forest can be considered uh, degradation and those emissions that happened uh, when there was con conversion of course obviously it's deforestation uh, so, okay so I might this so let me just reflect also on uh, the um, the results huh? so uh, what you see here is like the breakdown of the carbon pools so uh, you can see immediately see some some regional uh, some uh, some country level uh, variation uh, among uh, the proportion of the carbon pools. So so the more the more colder ones, temperate boreal regions, uh, they have more dominance of the SOC, and tropical ones otherwise um, be related to the composition uh, colder because uh, it's lower, and then. It's also noticeable that the below ground component can be uh, relatively higher in the tropics. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, what's more striking is that uh, when you account for seven years, so reasonable that you get a long bar, uh, but uh, afterwards, uh, annually, should have like a relatively uh, well, uh, uh, shorter bar. But uh, we see some interesting results here in Sweden, USA, and that should be, uh, we should have a triple look on that. Uh, could be some 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 uh, uncertainty related uh, result or, uh, I mean, map related, input related result or so. Um, yeah, so comparison with the UNFCCC, uh, so these carbon reports, uh, of course, uh, those who signed in the Paris Agreement should report also, Annex 1 and non-Annex 1 countries. And they're basically reporting with the uh, information from uh, managed lands. Uh, so from uh, they're mostly using NFI as basis. Uh, so it's, uh, and you know that NFI is uh, are, uh, uh, well not un not uh, regularly updated, uh, and uh, it measures the fluxes only or the changes. Uh, so so no reports about the stocks also, and then. Um, yes, so the main dissimilarities is that the accounting, the C accounting framework uh, could report both stocks and flows, uh, fluxes, but note that they, the countries usually are, um, have their own official forests uh, area and, and EO-based data, you can have flexibilities also well, in, in the forest mask used. Uh, so. Uh, but yeah, the reporting for US NFC is, is aggregated at country level, and this see uh, base can, can have like a system ecosystem level, and and you can also go from level one to level three uh, classes. So level three, of course, more disaggregated, like a broadleaf open canopy forest, uh, coniferous closed canopy forest, up to that kind of level. Um, and then the definitions of uh, certain. Uh, 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 pools. Uh, uh, so forest land, they, they exclude, of course, organic soils, but includes mangroves, and then they include peat fires also in the in the organic soils and the aggregation of these uh, land uses in the other land use, and then the fluxes from these uh, four uh, inputs go to the the Lulisi Fnet. Um, we were able to compare as, uh, uh, our results to uh, the, the UNFC's report. We mainly used the, grass, the gap field report by uh, Grassi et al., which, is, uh, which did us a, lot, a, a big favor of compiling the, the raw data from uh, countries. And uh, we simply did the uh, conversion from uh, make it comparable to carbon and, and also reclassification, reclassifying certain class in, from our side to make it uh, super comparable. Um, and then we 
for now, this is like a uh, first results how, and I try to color code it just to uh, guide uh, whether it's like a net uh, emission or a net uh, sequestration or removal. So I tried to just compare it for now based on uh, the signage, but uh, I can also have a scatter plot later on. Uh, so it's basically uh, there's a, some disagreement, of course, from the two, um, mainly because of there's still a lot of inconsistencies and uh, differences in terms of uh, how things are defined, how forests are defined, managed lands are defined, and so on. Um, and also the data input plays a role, uh, and uh, as I said, it's like NFI based mostly. This uh, the Lulu CF reporting. Uh, it's a earth observation as of now. It's uh, really been used. Uh, there's also a paper from uh, co-author Joanna Mello that uh, elaborates that, um, and also what to include and what not. So that there has to be some kind of uh, really uh, um, uh, uh, looking into this, uh, deep, 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 to dive deeper into this and to uh, have. Uh, more me, uh, to make sure that they're super comparable and so on. So, yeah, uh, oh, sorry. so I can say that EO is, has potential also for uh, being used to, uh, to see a carbon accounting. Um, and also, but and also not only to see, but also UNFCCC, uh, because as you notice, there's a lot of zeros in here, meaning no reports. So that's uh, something to, uh, to uh, uh, resolve also somehow. And then it offers, it of course, offers uh, uh, high spatial temporal resolution, which is CL loves. Uh, so, um, and then, but I'd like to give a caution, of course, when you use EO data, you have to, really to uh, do the good practices. Uh, you should be super uh, informed what, what input are you using. You should do your assignment and uh, assess it on your own and, do, and initiate uh, independent validation, for instance. And also careful when you derive uh, like st statistics, like the carbon accounts themselves, because it's mainly an aggregation uh, uh, step. So you need to account for uh, the pixels you're counting and uh, the, the autocorrelation uh, when you aggregate, uh, uh, especially the carbon fluxes. So. Uh, yeah, uh, I w the updated uh, bullet, maybe I clicked the update, but it Maybe it didn't finish, but there was a last bullet that says uh, we also have like a, a carbon accounting tool as being also part of the open earth monitor that, that uh, we're currently developing to uh, really uh, make this carbon accounting more uh, user friendly. Uh, uh, it's using R Shiny, so yeah. Uh, maybe the next year I'll be able to present it. <laughs> okay, so I'm over. Oh, so I'm over time. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, uh, Happy to discuss uh, things with you. Yeah.